new rider I've been practicing on, so I don't have to stand in your way. So I've got to connect it over class grips. Let me get that connected. It's a learning curve. We're still getting it figured out. The stuff about it I don't like as much, but maybe as we get better with it, we'll get it figured out. jointly is the height of the tree and the square of the distance. So if we start writing our deal on that, volume varies jointly as the height and the square of the distance. I wrote volume equals K, that's varies. Volume varies directly as the height and the square of the distance. So there's your equation you would write. Okay, then it gives you some info to plug in. The volume of wood is 15.84 cubic feet, height's 24. Three or excuse me, 22, and the distance is three. So first thing I'm going to do is plug all that in to solve for k. So I got my volume was 15.84. I don't know the k. It said the height was 22, and the distance was three. So I do 22 times nine because three squared is nine, and then whatever I get, I do 15.84 divided by that, and I ended up having a k that was 0 0.08. So now I'm going to have to use that K with the new info they gave me down there in the next sentence. It says, what's the volume if the tree's 27 feet tall and has a measurement of 6 feet around the truck? So we're looking for volume. Come on, I just wrote, it's got a leg. Equals 0 0.08, my K said that the tree is 27 feet and the distance around it is 6. So I got 0 0.08 times 27 times 36 and that ended up being 81.76 feet cubed, which was 8. This thing, y'all ever watched any real old Jackie Chan movies where he's like moving his mouth and there's no sound and then five minutes later sound comes out? That's what this is like. I'll be right in the way and then all of a sudden stuff will start showing up. It's great. Alright, number two, we ready? The current I in an electrical conductor varies inversely. When we vary inversely, we're dealing with a uh, division. Varies inversely as the resistance R. So I'm going to say I varies inversely as R. Okay? Then it tells us some stuff. The current's 2 when the resistance is 470. So 2 equals K divided by 470. To solve for K, it's being divided by 470, so we're going to multiply by 470, and we get K is 940. Now we're going to use that to figure out some stuff in the next sentence. What's the current when the resistance is 576? So we'll say current is equal to 940. Looks like a G there, kind of. 940 divided by 576. And I got about 1.7. On um, three, there's several questions. Three and four both in a row are like it. Several questions where it's just concerned about the domain. This whole unit's been over rational functions. Rational meaning it can be written as a fraction. So the limitations you have when you're dealing with a fraction is that you cannot have a zero on bottom. So in all these questions, like three and four, and there's some more throughout, when it asks about the domain, you're going to take the bottom, the denominator, set it equal to zero and solve, and your domain will be every number except what you get. So if I'm looking at number three, the denominator x squared minus 6x minus 16, I'm going to set that equal to zero. Only worried about the denominator. Now I'm looking to see if I can factor that. A times C is negative 16. Factors of negative 16 that add a negative 6, that would be negative 8 and 2. So that would factor as x minus 8 times x plus 2. If I set both those equal to zero and solve, I get one that's 8 and I get one that's negative two. 
So my domain can be any number under the sun except for 8 and negative 2, which would be C. All right, same direction, same type of deal on number 4. Its denominator is A squared minus 81. You ready? A squared minus 81, that's difference of squares. They're both perfect squares. So to factor that, that would be A plus 9 and A minus 9. Set both of those equal to 0 and solve. What is the first thing? A squared minus 81. Set both of those equal to 0 and solve. If A plus 9 equals 0, that gets you a negative 9. And if A minus 9 equals 0, that gets you positive 9. So my domain can be any number under the sun except for 9 or negative 9, which is D, as in dandelion. expression simplify. So looking at that expression, that uh, equation that I gave you there, it's got two denominators. So to simplify that, looking at the choices, they all have one denominator. So that's what i got to figure out is how I can write all those, write that all over one denominator. So right now I've got 2 million over x plus 61 over 10, looking at those denominators of x and 10, I know a common denominator would be 10x. So I'm going to change both of these to have a common denominator of 10x. Okay, here on the left, it already, with the 2 million, it already had the x. The new thing down there is the 10. So I have to take 2 million and multiply it by 10, which would get me 20 million. <coughs> Okay, over there on the right, the 61, it already had the 10. Its new thing is an x, so I multiply it by x, which would just be 61x. So now I have a common denominator, 10x, 10x, so my answer will have that denominator. I can't actually combine 20 million and 61x, but I can just write it over the same denominator. 20 million plus, those are zeros, 61x. Which looks like another D. As in dynamite. Alrighty, on six, it says assume that those are the or, <laughs> assume that those are the denominators, what would the least common denominator be? So they didn't give you the whole fraction. They're cheating and taking the easy way out. If these were the denominators, what would your common denominator be? So we don't have to worry about multiplying stuff. We're just going to look at that. we got an 8xy is one of them, and then a 20x squared is the other. All right, you ought to know the smallest thing, 8 and 20, will both go into. Just by looking at the choices, even if you have a brain fart and you can't figure it out, look at the choices. All the choices have a coefficient of 40 in it. So I'm betting 8 and 20 will both go evenly into 40. Right? So I know I'm going to have a 40. Okay, now I go to the x's. What will x and x squared both go into? It's got 8. X squared. It's got to be the bigger one for them to go into it. Look at your y's. What will y and no y go into? No y. So there would be your common denominator, which is a as an aardvark. <laughs> Alright, on 7. Got some 7's in it. 1 over x minus 7 minus 7 over 7 minus x. 
says add or subtract as indicated. So we're subtracting. When we add or subtract, you've got to have a common denominator. Does that problem have a common denominator? No. X plus 7 said my sex, grace is right, are not the same. What are they? Very good, Grace. They're opposites. So if I can multiply one of those whole fractions by a negative 1, then they would be a common denominator, wouldn't they? Well, yes, they would. So, I haven't figured out how to change colors yet on this. There we go. If I want to multiply something, I want to multiply... I picked it, was it not? There we go. I want to multiply this whole side by negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 over x minus 7. That's going to turn this to a positive 7 because it was a negative. Now that's going to make that 7 on the bottom be a negative and that negative x be a positive. So it flips the signs, which makes it the same as the one on the left, positive x and negative 7. So now you do have a common denominator. So your answer is going to have that denominator. And you know what 1 plus 7 is. And I've written a whole lot more here than shown up yet. Maybe it'll finish. Oh, look at that. It's wrong. Yeah, I've got some more. I've already. Come on. This is going to be enough to make me throw this thing and break it. Should put a timer on this. You can do it. Improvement faster. Not the case. Alright, number eight, page two, there is no common denominator, so that's going to be one of our dilemmas. We've got a, a subtraction problem, we need a common denominator. Well, my whole screen just went away. It's still connected. got 1 over 6x cubed y squared minus 11 over 2xy. All right, coefficients first. What will 6 and 2 both go evenly into? 6. So we know we're going to have a 6 in our denominator. What about x cubed and x? What will they go evenly into? Good, Aaron. So we're going to have an x cubed. What about y squared and y? What will they go evenly into? Good job. All right, so the 1, it didn't change. It stayed 6x cubed y squared, so we don't change the 1 on top. The 11, we got to do some work with it because it was a 2 and we changed it to a 6. That means we multiplied it by 3. It was an x, and we changed it to an x cubed. I'm going to run out of room. I'm going to jump it up there on the top. That means we multiplied it by an x squared. My square's not writing. I'm too close to the top. That's a squared. Can't really remember that. Y, we changed to y squared, so we multiplied it by y. So we got 6x cubed y squared. 1 minus 11 times 3 times x squared times y. Shazam. That's like trying to read hieroglyphics or something, isn't it? D is in 
Alright, Maria and Charlie can deliver 45 papers in 3 hours. How long would it take them to deliver 21 papers? Lots, not lots, several different ways you could do. Number 9, you ought to be able to just look at that and know they deliver 15 papers in an hour. Right? That'd be one way you could do it because if you divide it 45 by 3 and then you could go from there. I set it up as a proportion. I said they got 45 papers in 3 hours. 21 papers will take how many hours? One thing about this is you ought to know you're delivering fewer papers, right? So your time should be less than three hours. And then look what they did on A and B. Those are dumb answers, right? So no way it's going to take somebody 63 hours to deliver 21 papers. That's like, how many days is that? Two and something? All right, cross multiply on this. That gets me 45X is equal to, here's your 63, divide by 45, and it took old Maria and Charles about 1.4 hours. Alright, so we have this equation that they gave us on number 10. We have that twice on this test. There's one later on the next page or the next one after that where they actually give you a number to plug in and do some computations with. This question, there's no number to plug in. This is strictly common sense stuff. So I didn't even do any math. So just listen as we talk about it. This, you're, you're waiting in line at a toll booth is what you're dealing with here. And it says X will be between 0 and 1, and that will be based on the traffic intensity. So, you know, if you're between 0 and 1, I would say point seven. Traffic's pretty up there, right? In point nine, it's way up there. Point one, it's pretty light. You know, the closer you get to zero or one. So it says, what happens to the average number of vehicles waiting as the traffic intensity increases? Okay, so let's use some common sense. Let's say it's three in the morning and you're the only one on the road and you come rolling up to a toll booth. Are you going to have a lot of cars there in line? Or are you going to have to wait very long? No, you're going to zip right on through and be done. Now let's say it's 530 and you're on the mega interstate in Houston and you come rolling 530 p.m. and you come rolling up to a toll booth. Everybody's just got off work. You're on one of the biggest interstates in the U.S. There's going to be several cars stacked up there. You're going to be waiting a while. So as the traffic intensity gets bigger, you're going to have more cars. You're going to be waiting longer. So what choice says something similar to that? C, good job. All right, 11, we got to solve. We ready? I got 6 over 5x plus 1 over 2x is equal to negative 1 tenth. So for me to solve this, I need to get rid of the fraction. So what will 5x, 2x, and 10 all go evenly into? 10x. Very good. So we're going to multiply this whole thing by 10x. Okay. When I take it here, the x's are going to cancel out. 10 over 5 is going to reduce. What's 10 over 5 the same as? 2, right? And you already got a 6 there. So you take that 6 that's already there and multiply it by the 2 that you had. I got you, Grace. Don't worry. If I had 6 over 5x and I multiplied it by 10x. x is canceled. 10 over 5 is 2. So you just have 6 times 2. Why, do you have, why did you have to multiply it all by 10x? I didn't have to get a common denominator. I was canceling the fractions out, so I did that by multiplying by the common denominator, yes. Okay. All right, now we got to take that 10x to the 1. The x's will cancel out again. 10 over 2 is 5, so you just have that 1 times 5. Okay, we got one piece left to distribute. Tens will cancel out, 
So you just have negative 1 times x. So that's 17 is equal to negative x divided by negative 1, and x will be negative 17. I don't know. Well, right in lowest terms. Are you ready? That's one of the quicker ones. We've got 20m cubed p squared over 2m to the 10th p. All right, so I'm just going to work left to right on this. 20, my 2, there it is. 20 over 2, that's 10. Then on your m's, what's the rule when you're dividing that you do with exponents? Subtract, good. So you got 3 minus 10 is negative 7. Since it's a negative, you'll put it on bottom and make it positive. Another way to think of it, more common sense way that I like, if I subtract these, 3 and 10, 10 is bigger, so there's more on bottom. So my answer went on bottom. Sometimes that helps me think of it like that. Does that make sense? The, the majority was on the bottom, so that's where it stayed. Okay, now my P's, the majority is on the top. P squared divided by P is just P. I was flipping through and, and looking because I did this sometime last week so I had to look over it again this morning before I did it with first period so I would remember number 13 is where I, I did most of my scratch work on out of all of them I did more writing on 13 than I did any of them we ready I got x to the negative second over x to the negative second minus y to the negative second. All right, so deal, main dilemma to start with is that you've got negative power, so we have to use the negative exponent rule. So that x to the negative second on top is the same as 1 over x to the second. Remember once the negative power, put it on bottom, make it positive. So on the denominator, this is the same as 1 over x to the second minus 1 over y to the second. Now on the top, 1 over x squared, there's nothing you can do to simplify that. But on the bottom, we have to get a common denominator and write that over one denominator. So x squared, y squared, its common denominator is going to be x squared, y squared. Okay, this 1 here, where I'm underlining, it already had the x squared, so we have to multiply its top by y squared. Just the opposite over there, it already had the y squared, so we multiply it by x squared. So now what we're looking at, my numerator up there where I just started is still the same. I got 1 over x squared over y squared minus x squared over x squared y squared. Remember the lesson we did, complex fractions? That's where this one came from. Now when you got division and fractions, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to say 1 over x squared times, I'm going to flip that one, x squared y squared over y squared minus x squared. There's only one little smidgen you can ninja there. I see what it is? This numerator on the right, right here, is not a binomial, so you can pick it apart. So you've got x squared over x squared right there that you can mark out. So what you're left with on top is 1 times y squared. On bottom, y squared minus x squared. Which, that first one's a y squared, the tail got long. That should be a
class. We have two more variations here on 14, 15. 14, M varies directly as P. That's easy, that's just directly as multiplication. So, M varies directly as P. There's your equation. And it gives you some stuff. Um, M's 35 when P is 5. So 35 equals K times 5. Divide by 5. And you know your K is 7. Now use that in your new info. Find M when P is 9. So M will equal K times P, which is 60. All right, 15, it's that interest formula that we use, but that still is technically a variation, so that's why they're able to include it. When we did that in class, we talked about interest was equal to principal times rate times time. So that's what we're looking at on 15. I equals PRT. So uh, find for a fixed amount of principal. So we don't know our principal. We don't know our P. The simple interest varies jointly. That's all the stuff we got there. The simple interest is $1,050. So that's your I. So $1,050 equals we don't know our P. Our rate, it says 3%. That's 0 .03. Our time, it says 7 years. So I'm going to multiply 0 .03 times 7. Then I'll divide 1,050 by that. And I got uh, $5,000 was my principal I deposited. Okay, now i got to take that to find the amount of interest I make in this other scenario. Find the interest, so I equals P, which we just said was $5,000. This time it says your rate's 5%, so that'll be 0 .05, and it says our time is 10 years. So I'm just doing 5,000 times 0 .05 times 10, and I got 2500 three when you get ready. All right, we got here wanting a common denominator, I think. Yep, find the least common denominator. So what you're going to do is factor both of those and see what your parts are. So when you add r squared plus 4r plus 3, if you look at a times c, that's 3. Factors of 3 that add to 4, that has to be r plus 3 and r plus 1. So the other side is r squared plus r. Factor that, take a GCF of r out, that leaves you with r plus 1. So our denominator has to have an r plus 3 in it, has to have an r plus 1 in it, has to have an R in it. They usually put a single monomial like that on the front, and we already put the R plus 1. So that would be your common denominator, which looks like D. Seventeen. We'll tell whether or not that big expression equals that small one. So what we're going to do is break down the big one and simplify it and just see if we end up with a small one or not. Okay? So I've got AC plus AD. I'm just going to write that numerator and work on it. AC plus AD minus BC minus BD. Let's just work on this first. To factor this, since there's four terms and no GCF in all four of them, you're looking at grouping. First group has an A in common. That would leave you with a C plus D. Second group has a negative B in common. That would leave you with a C plus D. So your numerator is C plus D times A minus B. That's your numerator. Put a star there so we don't lose that because we're fixing to do some more work. Okay, now we've got to do the same with the denominator. It had AB 
plus AC. Uh, where'd it go? Minus B squared minus BC. Oh, stupid, that's BC. All right, GCF of the first group would be A. I'd leave you with B plus C. GCF of the second group would be negative B. That would leave you with B plus C. So our denominator would be B plus C. I'm fixing to go scoot it up, I know. Times A minus B. So that's our denominator. We might can look at that from where those two stars are. Remember the first star is the top, the second star is the bottom. Is there anything you can ninja? Yep. Good, those A minus B's go, don't they? Yeah. So all you've got left is C plus D over B plus C. Is that what the question asks if it equals? Yep. Yes, so you can, yes. All right, number 18 is that other one about the toll booth I was talking about, but this one, it actually gives you a number to plug in. Okay, so everywhere there's an X, plug the number in that it gave you. It's uh, X squared, it gives us 0.81, so I have 0.81 squared over 0.5 times 1 minus 0.81. And that just becomes a calculator problem. I got, let's see, this is 18. I got 6.9 vehicles when I topped all that in, which was A. Nineteen F varies jointly as Q squared and H. F varies jointly as Q squared and H. Then it gives you some stuff to plug in. F's 150. When Q is 5, can I go ahead and write 25? 5 squared. And H is 2. 25 times 2 is 50. 150 divided by 50 gets you a K of 3. Now find H when F is 108. 108 equals K times Q is 3. 3 squared is 9. It's 27. 108 divided by 27 should get you 4. Is that right? Yep. Alright, 20 domain again, and it's a fraction, so we're only worried about the denominator. That denominator, 49t squared minus 16, is a difference of squares. It would factor as 7t plus 4. Take the square root of both of them. 7t minus 4. Set both of those equal to 0 and solve. I'd have 7t on this first one equals negative 4. Divide by 7, and I'll get negative 4 sevenths. On the other one, it'd be just the opposite sign because I would add 4 first. 7t is equal to 4 divided by 7, and I would get positive 4 sevenths. So my domain can be anything except 4 positive or negative 4 sevenths, which would be D. Twenty-one. When we graphed in class, most of the time I made an input-output table while y'all just plugged them in your calculator. Either one will work on that. Doesn't really matter to me. Uh, check it. And make sure you can get it. It should be B if you plug that in your graphing calculator. And test that out. Oh, yeah. no, I didn't make it all the way. But yeah. That was the last problem I got to. Yeah. So. I hate it when it's like that. You got to flip and look at them. The <laughs> All right, 22. Luckily on 22, they already gave you a common denominator. It's 14x. They both have it. So your answer has to have that denominator. There's only one of the choices that has it. Where they get the 11 from? That's 8 plus 3. B. All right, 23. It's one of our distance, rate, and time problems. I always make my table on that. This time we're on going upstream and downstream again. 
All right, it says the speed of the stream is four miles an hour. That's what affects us going upstream and downstream. If it's four miles an hour and I'm going upstream, that's I'm going into that, so it's slowing me down. So my rate will be whatever it was, slow down, take off four miles an hour. When I'm going downstream, that current's pushing me. I'm going faster. Think about when you're floating the river. You don't have to paddle as much. So I'm taking my speed and I'm speeding it up. I'm going faster, four miles an hour down. Then it says... The boat goes 66 miles downstream. That's a long way. I hope that's not just a little float trip. And then it uh, goes 33 miles upstream. Okay, we know normally distance equals rate times time. But our missing junk here is in time. So if distance equals rate times time, time is distance over rate. Now the other stuff it told you was that this particular boat does these distances in the same amount of time. That means their times are equal. So I'm going to say 66 over x minus 4 is equal to 33 over x plus 4. Cross multiply. 33x minus 26. I've got I've written the distances backwards, I think. Sixty-six miles downstream. Yeah, I wrote those distances backwards. These need to be flip flopped right there. So the rates? No, just the distances. I had the rates right, but the distances I did wrong. It said it was sixty-six miles downstream and I put that in my U column. So it's going to change these to 33 and 66. So should be 66 over x plus 4 equals 33 over x minus 4. All right, you will still cross multiply there. I'm going to give you the equation you get, and then I'll give you the answer for it, and you can go back and study it when you have time. 66x minus 264, that's what you get when you cross multiply there, equals 33x plus 132. That's what you get when you cross multiply there. When you end up solving that thing, your x is 12, so you should get 12 miles an hour on that. So use your table in the equation I gave you and go back and practice that and solve it. All right, 24. 24. Anytime it's a map problem, I do proportions. I know we're going quick. we got time to finish this. It says 2.4 inches on the map is the same as the cities that were 768 miles apart. How many inches on the map if the cities are 1,536 miles apart? So that got me 768x is equal to 3,686.4 divided by 768. And I got 4.8 inches. Which another way to look at that was it just doubled. Would have saved you a little bit of time on that. All right, you got denominators. It asks for the common denominator. So again, you're going to factor them. We're on the last one. You're going to factor them. That first piece, x squared plus 4x minus 12. 8 times c, negative 12. The factors negative 12 that I add to 4 are 6 and negative 2. 5x plus 30. Take a 5 out. x plus 6. So our denominator's got to have x plus 6. It's got to have x minus 2, got to have 5, put a 5 there on the front, and we already got the x plus 6. So that would be A. Woo! That was fast and furious, wasn't it? <laughs>